This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, you were deeply moved to do something about our sin. And so we ask you to look mercifully upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul by your holy word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In today's reading, we turn to uh, John's Gospel again. Excuse me as I get my paper out of here. John's Gospel, the 11th chapter. We are reading about the story of Lazarus and John... 11 verses 38 through 44 is our appointed reading for today. We hear these words. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead men, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been dead there, there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he heard, had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the gospel of our Lord. This morning, uh, one of our awesome youth that we have, one of the many, uh, Lacey Libran, uh, did a great devotion on this very text. If you haven't had a chance to watch it on Facebook, I invite you to do so. Uh, she did a great job of capturing the, the simplicity, the truth of this text, and, and really applying it to today's uh, context. So if you haven't had a chance, I encourage you to look at it. And now that I am preaching on these same seven verses, uh, the truth is, is it's a reminder uh, that Scripture is simple, yet because uh, it, it all points to Jesus, yet it's very deep and can really make you think. Case in point, uh, verse 38 uh, reads in the New International Version, which we read just a second ago. Jesus, once again, m deeply moved, came 
to the tomb. This phrase, deeply moved, is used the same context, same phrase in verse 33. When Jesus saw her, that is Mary, Lazarus' sister, weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit. I don't know what comes to mind when you think of someone being deeply moved, but I think of splognizomai. Yeah, I think of splognizomai. It's a great Greek word. When I originally read this, that's exactly where my mind went when I read deeply moved. You see, splagnizomai is one of those awesome onomatopoeia words that sounds like it means. Splagnizomai. It sounds like you're throwing up, and literally that's what it means. From the innards of your body comes out. And usually it's translated compassion. It moves you in your inner parts, compassion does. It's what moved Jesus to feed the 5,000 in Matthew 14. It's the same word that moved Jesus to feed the 4,000 in Matthew 15. And it's the same word that moved Jesus in Matthew 20 to heal two blind men. And splognizomai is the word that Jesus uses in his parable in Luke 15 when he tells the story of the father being moved to go after his son and kiss him when the prodigal son returns. It's the type of thing that moves people like you to to do something when others are in need. It's what moves people to volunteer when others need a hand. It's what moved some of our members to say, I want to do something during this COVID-19 crisis. I want to do something locally for our, our local staff in the ICU. And so this afternoon, some of our people delivered sweets, treats, and a, and a loving note to encourage the ICU and CCU workers after their long hours. Yes, compassion or splognizomai can, can move us to do wonderful things. This is most certainly true. Compassion moves us. Compassion moved Jesus. But it didn't move him, Jesus In this example from John 11, no, compassion didn't move him. Actually, the more I looked at this text, I had to go back and and read it because that's where I originally thought. And I come to find out the, the NIV doesn't quite capture it. But listen to the way the New Living Translation captures this word. The word is embrimomenos. Embrimomenos. And John 11, verse 38 says this into the New Living Translation. Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. You see, this word, embrimomenos, means to snort like a horse or a mule or a bull with indignation, to sigh, to blame, to rebuke harshly. It's the same word that Jesus' disciples used at Jesus' anointing. You remember that story? Perhaps you're familiar with it. It's six days before the Passover. Jesus is about to arrive into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, but that hasn't happened yet. No, in Bethany, just outside of Jerusalem, Jesus reclines at a table at the home of Simon the leper. Guess who's there with him? That's right. The resurrected Lazarus from our text. Mary, Martha, they're they're all there. But Mary does something very unusual, but something very honorable. You see, she takes very expensive perfume and anoints Jesus' feet. It's a proper thing to do if you're preparing someone for burial or for something special. And Mary was doing just that when one of the disciples blurts out, 
Why? Why are you wasting so much money on this man's feet? This could have been sold and given to the poor. John's gospel, our gospel, in John chapter 12 will tell us that that disciple is Judas, the one who would betray Jesus. Yes, John even offers this commentary. He didn't care about the poor, for he was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Yet John offers that commentary on Judas' frustration, his indignation, his anger, his embrimomenos. So why does John use this same word to describe Jesus being moved to anger? The same word to describe Judas' anger, the thief's anger, is used to describe Jesus, the perfect one's anger anger that moves him in today's text. Why? It's interesting, at least, and most likely intentional at best, that, Jesus, that John use this, uses this word. That John uses this snorting anger after nearly identical statements. John 11, verse 32. Two reads this way from Mary. Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus, deep with anger, welling up within him. Then, verse 37. Some said, this man healed a blind man. Could he kept Lazarus from dying? And what is Jesus' response to well up with snorting anger. I truly believe John is purposeful, purposely using this word twice in these two verses. After all, it's the only time that John uses the, this word in his entire gospel. And he uses it purposely in the gospel when Jesus is confronted with death and his lack of movement towards stopping that death. So I sincerely believe John is purposeful in using this word here, but why? Why does Jesus get angry at the death of Lazarus? Why does Jesus get angry at the comments? If you'd have been here, O oh Lord, oh, couldn't he have saved him from dying? Because deep down, Jesus knew he could do something. And deep down, he knew this pain of death wasn't the way it was intended to be. If death disturbs you, if the climbing death toll from COVID-19 angers you, if the estimates of 100 to 250,000 U.S. deaths just reported as an estimate yesterday from our White House. If those numbers anger you deeply and causes you to snort at death, if the diagnosis and prognosis of a friend who has cancer dies or, or someone who dies suddenly from a car crash angers you, or if this fallen world angers you, you're in good company. Because it angers your Savior, Jesus. You see, he was there when this world was created perfectly. He was there when, when God created the heavens and the earth, and at the end of the sixth day, he would say, and it is very good. But God, in his great wisdom, knew that he was creating man with free will. Free will that would allow them to take that bite, that fateful, frightful first bite into sin. And death would come into our world. 
Yes, Jesus knew that when he was facing Lazarus' tomb. So what do you do with this anger? The psalmist, Psalm verse 4, verse 4 puts it this way. In your anger, do not sin. What did Jesus do with his anger? When our immediate context, he resurrected Lazarus. What does he do in the broader context with that anger? He takes your sin and my sin upon him. And he takes it to a cross. A cross called Calvary's holy mountain. And he dies for your sin. Yes, Jesus took your cross, your your death that you deserve, and your sin all upon him and died an agonizing, excruciating, might I say, snorting angrily death, being forsaken by the Father, as he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus did that for you, for me, for this entire world. So that one day, no person would have to, have to endure death again. Jesus did that for all those who are dying right now. As we prepare to make our way to holy, Calvary's holy mountain and go through our week of remembrance of holy week, I pray that our Holy Spirit continues to well up in you anger and frustration for the sin that causes Jesus' death and causes you to turn away from that sin and receive the mercy and the grace that Jesus won for you. May God grant this for Jesus' sake. Amen. We turn to the Lord in prayer. God, you alone are worthy of honor, glory, and praise. With you, With your righteous anger, you took our sin to the cross and overcame death, sin, and the grave. With you, we can overcome the grave, our own sin, and our own anger that sometimes leads to sin. Right now, O Lord, we are asking you to heal those who are sick and protect those who are not. Not just with this COVID-19, but all who are ill, hospitalized, struggling, going through treatments. But Lord, thank you. Thank you for the promise that you have overcome death and the grave. That even if this illness or some other illness would take our lives, we have the assurance and certainty with you who overcame our death, our grave that we deserve. And so I ask you, Lord, give our leaders extra wisdom as they navigate this pandemic and economic uncertainty. But strengthen your global church. Reveal reveal to us how we can
partner together to reach the needs of those around us and share this hope that we have in you. Calm all fears. Fill us with your hope, joy, and peace as we continue to trust in you. Use this pandemic to pave the way for spiritual renewal. We want your glory, power, and healing to be on display. Together with St. John, we say, Come, Lord Jesus, come. And blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord, the Lord Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you forever. Amen. We sing hymn 440 of Jesus, I Will Ponder Now. <laughs>